Hello everyone and welcome to a very special edition of the StarCraft 2 Report as I will be covering the action at the MLG Columbus all weekend long just for you guys. These episodes are going to be recorded at night after the day's events and then they will be aired and uploaded overnight so that you guys can check them out in the morning and get all the highlights and action from MLG Columbus in the morning. Get a huge recap of everything that's happened in the previous day's events so that you guys don't have to sort through it all yourself. Although I definitely highly recommend if you haven't already to actually check out the HQ stuff for MLG Columbus because it is actually running extremely well compared to MLG Dallas, which is a total disaster for MLG. So moving straight into today's highlights. So first we got to talk about the setup. Two streams for StarCraft 2 at MLG Columbus. First we have the red stream over to my left here with Day9 and DJ Wheat streaming on the red stream doing the casting there for you guys covering matchups and then at the exact same time in case you don't want to see the matchup that they're casting on the blue stream their second stream they have none other than taste tosis who flew out from korea to come chill out and hang out with everybody at mlg columbus and cast some games so an absolutely amazing setup um for uh the overall of it all it's um been really good so far the production has been top-notch they've done a lot of explanation and stuff like that for people just tuning into their first mlg and they've been doing an awesome job casting all the games so you can either follow your favorite casting team or follow your favorite players there's just so much starcraft 2 content coming out of mlg it has been absolutely awesome and all the hq streams have been free for this past day but they will not be free um, starting today when you actually see this episode so you will have to pay if you want to keep the HQ but the SQ isn't terrible um, if you keep it in the player it's actually pretty watchable if you try and blow it up it actually starts to get a little bit unseeable um, HQ streams definitely need it if you want to blow it up the quality is not perfect even on the HQ streams definitely not high def but it is still pretty good definitely a noticeable difference compared to uh, what they had before and um, it definitely took a lot of great steps. They've got uh, two satellite trucks to help boost their internet. They've got the multiple streams for all the StarCraft 2 content. And they, they went with the new streaming group, so the HQ actually does look better than the standard definition stream. So all good things so far out of MLG as far as the setup goes. And they even have those awesome soundproof boosts now that the uh, caster said they checked out and you can't hear a thing. So that's awesome for the players so if they don't hear the crowd there. Moving on to one of the biggest news uh, pieces of news for MLG Columbus, and one of the things that people were highly anticipating was the Koreans. With the new partnership of MLG and GSL, we have a lot of Korean players coming out to participate in their first ever North American tournament. Most notable of those in the pool play, we ended up with MC, MMA, Moon, and Lucera. MC playing in Pool C, MMA playing in Pool, uh, I believe it was B, then we have Moon in Pool A and Lucere in Pool D, and then Julyzer coming over to play in the open bracket, so we have a Korean in every single possible bracket of the tournament, four in each of the pool groups, and then one coming through the open bracket. So the Koreans are here, and the question on everybody's mind is how would the North Americans and Europeans stack up against the Koreans? And overall, I'd say it's looking pretty well for the North Americans and for the Europeans, and it's not looking that bad for the Koreans either as they have been having extremely strong performances as we go over some of those results in just a little bit. Uh, moving on to a few issues that they did have. Everything has not gone completely without a problem. Um, there was a couple issues that weren't totally awful though. Uh, most notable was during the in control and Lucera matchup. Um, they had to pause the game multiple times. You can see I got a picture up there. Um, they had to restart game one, kind of gave away in control strategy for that game. Lucera was able to uh, react to it a whole lot better, um, put himself in a lot better position compared to what he was in in the first game. So it might have actually cost in control that game, hard to tell for sure. Um, lots of pauses even in the preceding games. And Lucera ended up winning the series, but overall it wasn't really uh, that enjoyable to watch. But really that was the only hiccup of the day, thankfully. Um, there is some buffering issues with the high quality stream. It does have to buffer quite often, so sometimes you basically have to pause it, walk away for 5 or 10 minutes, and then come back and hit play and resume it. But it does have that option, which is the cool part, is, is you got to get up, go to the bathroom or something, pause the stream. As soon as you hit play, it, it leaves off right where you were. You don't miss a single bit of action, and it helps take care of the buffer so you can actually watch the high-quality stream. It does put you a little bit behind the action, so if you're trying to flip it between the streams or something like that, it makes it a little more difficult. But overall, it's not that big of a deal. It's a definitely a really nice feature so you don't miss any of the action in the tournament. So now we're going to move into some results. 
As you can see, on my left here, I have all the results for the open bracket of the people who are still currently alive. That is actually changing as we speak, because as I am actually casting this for you guys to see in the morning, games are still being played. Players will probably be playing in the open bracket till uh, 2, maybe 3, or even 4 in the morning over in the East Coast time. So players definitely playing late into the wee hours of the night, but luckily the players who are playing later and later on in the day won't have to play right away in the morning, so they will be able to catch some shut eye and get some sleep before they have to get up and play their matches two notables still alive though coming through the open bracket in their first ever MLGs is of course the Korean player July Zerg of Team Startail and of course Thorazane Thorazane recently uh, having some awesome awesome matchups beating out Naniwa for the uh, TSL 3 title so Thorazane has been hot lately and Thorazane is looking good so Thorazane and July, both still alive. Both uh, my two picks, I'd say, out of the open bracket to potentially make it to pool play and actually do really well in pool play as well. I could expect them to actually get quite a few wins. They could actually end up being top seeds in the tournament if they can make it through the rest of the open bracket. So definitely keep your eye on those two, especially if they're broadcasting any of their games starting tomorrow. And now I have a special treat for you guys. Is we're going to move on to some highlights of the action from the pool play that was broadcast today. So as you can see now, boom, I have a screen up in front of me with a picture. And this picture is coming from the first matchup of the night, which was Idrit versus MC. And now we are looking at a shot from game one. Uh, in that game, MC kind of did some, uh, kind of like a, a cool little Stargate opening. Tried to put on some pressure to Idra. Um, but Idra managed to hold it off, and then as we move to this next picture, you can see the result of that. Idra doing an elevator into MC's base, doing a ton of damage to MC. MC got thrown completely through a loop, and Idra managed to finish off that Game 1 winning it. Then they moved into Game 2 as we go to this next screenshot in just a minute, because I'm not going to put it up just yet, because I want to explain this up a little bit. Uh, MC ended up picking Zelnaga Caverns. Game started out somewhat normal, but then MC decided to go for a uh, Zealot Stalker pressure to try and get Idris hatch. Idris just barely saved his hatch, and then tried to do a Roachling all in, and MC just barely held that off. And then the both players were on two bases fighting over the middle of the map. And now we're going to go to the next screenshot. And as you can see, this is the end results. Idris finally got a good position on MC, used Neural Parasite, took over two of his own Immortals, and used MC's Immortals to help with his roaches to destroy all of MC stalkers and Idra came out victorious in that game and what was an epic game and definitely gave Idra the momentum to catapult himself onward in the tournament and now we're gonna go and here's a little bit of a highlight from that in control Lucera game that took forever of all the games to watch this is probably the game not to watch there were so many leg issues and stuff if there was one game I had to recommend you guys not watching it was this in control versus Lucera matchup to so many pauses so many breaks in the action um, if they go and end up replaying it without um, cutting out all the slowdown time in between, just skip it, go away, take a break. You know, if it's still on in the morning, go eat some breakfast and stuff while that's going on. Um, Lucira ends up winning, I'll just tell you that right now, and that's all you really need to know because the games themselves were not that high quality. Um, the strategies got messed up, timings got messed up, there was lots of issues going on the whole time. So that series ended up kind of being pretty disappointing when it could have actually been a pretty good series. But now moving on to better highlights as we have a highlight here from Idra versus Select. This is a Game 2 highlight. The Game 1 uh, Select kind of tried to do an interesting build, so it definitely might be worth checking out if they replay it. Um, kind of does an interesting build, or you can download the VOD later on because MLG does make all of their replays available. Um, did an interesting strategy, did like some plus building armor stuff, but Idra ended up winning in a lopsided uh, battle. Game 2, though, was absolutely torrid and fast plays. Both players going back and forth. Select didn't get a lot of damage done early in the game. Got a little bit behind, but then started moving forward and was starting to gain some ground. But then Idra got out that Broodlord and Fester comp, uh, composition that normally ends the game, but it ended up taking forever for Idra to actually end the game. Select was doing such a good job microing and trying to hold it off. Festers were running out of energy. He was taking out Broodlords, but inevitably Idra did manage to overwhelm Select and win that game, but it was still not absolutely excellent game you should definitely check it out moving on to the next highlight this is a highlight from mma versus jow game one mma does end up winning this matchup but it was an absolutely amazing game one definitely worth you guys checking out shout is a very cool build uh that i believe that straylock was the first one to do where you do blue flame hellions and siege tanks 
He got ahead enormously in the early game. MMA almost fought back and almost got back into the game. At one point, might have even been starting to get back ahead of Zhao, but then Zhao came back and ended up managing to keep a better uh, economic backbone and win the game one in an absolutely dramatic fashion. So it was absolutely an awesome game. Definitely check out game one of MMA versus Zhao. And in the last highlight, I have a highlight from Zhao versus Chef and what was another awesome series with Zhao playing versus Chef. Uh, a series that Chef won 2-1, to one, just barely squeaking out against Zhao. Game 3 was absolutely excellent. Excellent game. Um, Zhao was trying to get up a third base. Just couldn't get it up. Chef managed to hold him off. Chef was on a little bit better economy, and Chef managed to get out the Broodlords, and there was a lot of fighting going back and forth, but Chef managed to just barely overpower Zhao, deny him from getting that third base and forced Zhao to end up GGing because he just ran out of steam and ran out of resources. So it was very cool. Very excellent games. Definitely, um, with regardless of these highlights, go check out the games if you have the time. Now we're going to move into pool results as we move the highlights away. I'll have more of those for you guys tomorrow. Uh, pool standings currently. Um, I actually, the graphic that I have up right now is a little bit outdated. I've been updating the page. Um, as I've been waiting to do this cast, actually. So as we go into the pool standings, we have right now in pool A, Dignitas91 is no longer 2-0. He is now 2-1. Slush is now 2-1. Moon is 2-1. Root Druby is 1-1. Obviously, they haven't gotten their open bracket player yet. And Greetorp, to nobody's surprise. I'm sorry, Greetorp. You're just, you're not as, you're, you're, mm, I'm surprised you stayed in, in the pool, to be totally honest. Greetorp is going to be 0-3. Moving on to Pool B, we had Slayers MMA, one of the Koreans coming out very strong, 3-0, Chef 3-0 as well, but only one of those guys can remain 3-0, one of them is going to have to go down eventually, because they will eventually have to play each other. Then we have the open bracket player with no games yet, but he will tomorrow, so you guys can wait and see that. Kiwakaki surprisingly going 0-2. And then FXO's moon in is also kind of a surprise going 0-3. So some kind of surprises from Pool B. Pool C, Idra, 3-0. The man looks on the field. He looks like Naniwa at MLG Dallas. 3-0, no losses. Has 2 0 every single one of his matchups. So Idra looking absolutely unstoppable at this point in time. The question is, can somebody actually stop Idra? Only time will tell. Idra still has to play out of his group, I believe it is Tyler, and then he'll have to play the open bracket player, so still two people left who could potentially throw a loss at him, but we will see what ends up happening. MC with a very strong performance, doing very well in two of his games, and then just getting absolutely massacred by Idra, who just looks unstoppable, so he's 2-1. and one. Tyler 1-1, one and one. obviously open bracket player 0-0, zero, zero. Rhett is 1-2, and two. Select, surprisingly Select, I should say, is 0-3, oh so Select not having anywhere near the performance he did at Dallas. Now moving on to Pool D, we have Lucira at 3-0, and so Lucira looking extremely strong. Had a couple of close games, but still managed to pull out the wins. TLO at 1-1. One and one. Then we, of course, are waiting for the open bracket player. And Control 1-2, and two. Hey Pro 1-2, and two. And Machine 1-2. and two. So really in Pool D, it, it does look like they are going to be playing for the second place and the better uh, position in the uh, championship losers bracket, more so than actually still playing for the win. It looks like Lucero might have that one wrapped up already unless he were to lose two games in a row. So that's going to be it, guys. This is the StarCraft 2 Report, MLG Edition, day number one. I hope you guys enjoyed the results. Hope you guys enjoyed the highlights. Make sure to check out the upcoming games today. There's going to be some more awesome games coming out. They're going to be having some open bracket championship, uh, open bracket play for people getting into the pool play. So they're going to be having more pool play along with the open bracket winners coming out to play the pool winners. So definitely check that out and uh, watch to see if the Koreans can stay on top or if Idra, who looks unstoppable, can defeat the Koreans or if maybe last uh, months, uh, last MLG, I should say, is winner Naniwa can come back to win it again. This is going to be Ken Nursky Decker saying goodbye for now, guys. I will see you guys at the next report. Thank you.